Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week. Nashville is reeling this week after an apparent suicide bombing took place in the city's downtown on Christmas morning. Police received a call about shots fired near an AT&T transition building around 5.30 a.m., and when they arrived, they discovered a white RV parked outside. The RV had been there for several hours, and it begun to broadcast warning message that an explosion would occur in 15 minutes. The vehicle was also heard playing the 1964 song, Downtown, by Petula Clark. At 6.30 a.m., the RV exploded as police rushed to evacuate nearby residents. The blast injured three people, damaged dozens of buildings, and knocked out AT&T wireless service in and around Nashville. It appears that the only fatality resulting from the incident was of the perpetrator, a man named Anthony Quinn Warner. Warner was identified on Sunday night using DNA found at the crime scene and the vehicle ID number from the RV. Police have not been able to determine any motive behind the attack, but say there is no indication that anyone else was involved. Investigators have declined to label the incident a domestic terrorist attack until more information is known. A 33-year-old Long Island man is facing charges after he stole a mini snowplow on Christmas morning and used it to loot a target location in Bay Shore. Police say that Justin Shuffle stole the 2010 Bobcat skid loader just before 2 a.m. and crashed it through the front doors of the big box retailer. Once inside, he stole a coat and several gift cards. He was apprehended by police a short time later in the store's electronics section. No one was injured in the bizarre Christmas robbery, but the front of the target reportedly sustained significant damage. Shuffle has been charged with third-degree burglary and fourth-degree larceny. A terrifying incident unfolded at an Illinois bowling alley on Saturday night when a shooter opened fire on those inside shortly before 7 p.m. The attack took place at Don Carter Lanes in Rockford, killing three people and injuring several more. The shooter has been identified as 37-year-old Duke Webb, an Army Special Forces sergeant from Florida. When police arrived at the scene, Webb reportedly attempted to conceal his weapons and identity from them, but was unsuccessful. Webb was arrested and two handguns that had been used in the shooting were recovered. Investigators say that the horrific attack was completely random. Webb now faces three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of attempted first-degree murder. This week, it was reported that a former crime scene investigator in Huntington Beach, California, may serve up to two years in prison for crimes he committed while on the job. Authorities say that this past January, 53-year-old Sean Lotz was assigned to photograph a car belonging to an attempted murder suspect. While there, he apparently took at least one of several pills he found in the vehicle, which were later found to contain the powerful tranquilizer Fluolprazolam. He then proceeded to drive his police vehicle under the influence of the drug. When he was caught, he decided to resign from his job, rather than be fired. Lotz has been charged with misdemeanor counts of embezzlement by a public official, seizing property under the color of authority, and driving under the influence. Police in the UK arrested three men this week who were reportedly having a different kind of white Christmas, recovering $600,000 worth of drugs in two different raids in Manchester. Among the trove of illegal substances was at least a kilogram of cocaine, which had been separated into smaller bags and stashed in nine pizza boxes. The three men were arrested on suspicion of possession with intent to supply Class A and Class B drugs and have been in police custody since Christmas Eve. Police in Tampa, Florida, responded to a bizarre call this past Wednesday after a motorist was spotted on Interstate 75 throwing golf clubs onto the highway while driving. The man, who has been identified as 41-year-old Jonathan Day, was in a large van with a cherry picker boom arm and a basket attached to it, which made him easy to track down. When Day was pulled over by a state trooper, his strange behavior continued, and he initially tried to approach the officer while holding one of the golf clubs. Though the officer was able to get Day to put the club down, he still tried to resist arrest and reportedly punched the trooper in the face. The confrontation ended with Day being subdued with a stun gun. He is currently facing charges of battery on an officer, resisting an officer with violence, and depriving an officer of means of protection or communication.
A Delta Airlines passenger is facing charges of criminal mischief and reckless endangerment after he reportedly bailed out of an airplane as it was preparing for takeoff on Monday. The incident took place at LaGuardia Airport at approximately 11 a.m. on a Delta flight bound for Atlanta. 31-year-old Antonio Murdoch opened one of the plane's emergency exits and slid down its inflatable slide as it was being taxied to the runway. His girlfriend and dog also bailed out of the plane. Murdoch said that the bold move was due to an anxiety attack and that he suffers from mental health issues. He claimed that he had asked to get off the plane multiple times before opening the emergency door. Authorities say that the unplanned exit cost $170,000 in damages to Delta's Airbus A21 aircraft. Following the incident, the rest of the passengers on board had to be deplaned and accommodated on other flights. Missouri police announced second-degree murder charges against a couple this week after the body of a four-year-old girl was discovered at a home in the city of Cole Camp. 35-year-old Ethan Mast and 21-year-old Courtney Amon reportedly beat the young girl to death over a period of days in what has been described as a sort of religious episode. The child was hit with a leather belt and dunked in water outside of the house in near freezing temperatures. Mast and Amon claimed that they were trying to rid the girl's family of a demon. Her parents reportedly witnessed the beatings, but claimed they didn't intervene because they were told they would be beaten or shot themselves if they interfered. The girl's mother and a younger sibling also sustained injuries during the attacks, but survived. The victims reportedly attended the same church as Mast and Amon and were neighbors. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.